This call is now being recorded. This call is now being transcribed. Awesome. Welcome everyone to today's exciting session where we'll embark on a journey to broaden our career perspectives. So I'm Gugu, that's my name, and I'm delighted to be your host today uh, to this insightful session uh, with Michael Shackleton. So today uh, we'll start by exploring how expanding your perspectives can be really a catalyst on your personal and career growth. And then we'll open doors to new opportunities, how enriching your personal journey can be great for you. So. Uh, what we're going to do, we'll start off by just introducing our speaker, Michael Shackleton. And also we have a surprise for the audience as well. There is three tickets to be worn to our upcoming session, but I'll tell you more about that um, as soon as I have introduced our speaker. So our distinguished speaker today is Michael Shackleton. He's an accomplished legal professional partner at Shackleton and Mohapi attorneys and holds an LLB and LLM from the University of Pretoria. Michael's expertise extends uh, to corporate law and provincial and local government law. He also serves as the legal director of the Directors Association. With a background in politics, Michael has held roles such as a member of parliament and city councillor in the city of Tuane. Uh, his impressive journey includes leadership positions in organizations like JCI, where he's been recognized for his contributions. Michael chairs World Speech Day South Africa and has received multiple awards for his outstanding work. So welcome, Michael. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much for having me and uh, definitely a warm welcome to, to, to everyone here. Thank you so much. So now before we start with our conversation, I'd like to just uh, let you know about rather our participants about the special giveaway alert. So during our session today, we have this fantastic opportunity for you. We're giving away three ex exclusive tickets to our online career plan workshop, as you can see behind me here. Uh, at 10, it's, it will be on the 21st November at 10 a.m. Uh, this uh, ticket is worth 335 friends each. So this event is limited also to 15 participants. No one but just 15 people will be helped to start planning the 2024 goals and you know looking at after this conversation we're going to have with michael what is it that you can put into action for your next um yeah right so to be in the running for these valuable tickets all you need to do is engage please engage ask questions while michael is talking or answering any questions answering the questions please uh there's also a chat box there so please start uh, uh jotting down those questions okay and then also follow us on LinkedIn. We are Orange Memo Carriers. And plus, keep an eye out on our career exploration quest question. That will be sharing, uh, will be shared on our LinkedIn profile so that you can be able to answer your career exploration uh, questions. And then uh, the entries will be run through the weekend. And on Monday, we will know who has won. So awesome. Thank you so much. Michael, are you ready? Always. Always. All righty. So let's get ready for a transform transformation session with Michael and a chance to win big. All right. So uh, this Friday, we would like to start off by this one benefit into broadening our perspective. I will start off with uh, embracing diversity and inclusion. Michael, uh, let's discuss the importance of diverse perspectives in personal and professional growth and share examples of individuals who have benefited from embracing this diversity. Thank you uh, very, very much for, the, for that uh, very insightful question. Uh, what many people might not know is Barack Obama's favorite book is a book by Abraham Lincoln, which is called Team of Rivals. And I kid you not, this book is probably longer than the Bible. It's ridiculous. You can probably kill people with it. It's, it's mad. It's like thicker than a brick, literally speaking. But Team of Rivals, the whole point is that Abraham Lincoln, what he did when he was U.S. president, he honestly got people that were his political opponents to be part of his cabinets as well. People that didn't even want him to be president in the first place. And he ended up getting diverse views from across the board from these people. And this honestly shaped his, 
his presidency quite well. It gave him fresh ideas that he never had before. I think here in South Africa, we would, we would think along the lines of probably race. When we talk about diversity, uh, the world might think more, more along the lines of, of women, uh, in fact. But we do know that by, by having diverse people around us, we get views and perspectives we didn't have before. Uh, we see now, for example, in, in the United States of America, the deputy president is all at once a woman, she's African-American, and she's Asian, all at the same time. And this obviously generates a unique set of experiences, perspectives, ideas, which one is able to, to really leverage upon to be, to be able to understand different, different cultures as well. Uh, but I think also assists with being able to respond to situations to uh, the best possible effect. Uh, we see Elon Elon Musk. He's the richest man in the world. Uh, he he is known globally. He might not be known here for this, but he's known globally for for incorporating people from all over the world to run his company. So he gets diverse perspectives from that as well. So I think that people are more and more realizing it's not just that it's politically correct to have people from differing genders and ages and races, whether it's on your board or your organization or your cabinet as president, but there, there are very real positives that we're able to generate out of this. Thank you for that. Uh, just correct me if I'm wrong. So we are saying also, it's not really about hierarchy uh, when we talk about diverse. It's just bringing in different people into the room and having to engage with them. And uh, maybe it's an idea that I have in mind, you know, <laughs> and then I want to share it to see if uh, the market can maybe uh, buy it or not. Uh, well, I think there, there are things that still need to be achieved historically. Like there has not been an African-American woman president in the United States. I very much doubt we've had a woman president in the history of South Africa. Uh, but also in the, in the business space, you know, you can, you know, we, we do know, for example, that there are black women that are excellent, that are doing amazing things but it's not enough. Uh, we exist now in the year 2023, you know, when 1994 happened quite a while back, you know, where Sia Colisi, for example, it's only a newish thing, you know, that um, to have this, you know, black captain of the Springboks. Uh, so I think there, there are grounds that have to be broken where, honestly, where none of this is seen as unique, or incredible or out of this world, you know, where it's just the run of the mill thing, you know, that that's how it's expected in society that, you know, they, they aren't this, that these, you know, prejudices and stereotypes and hangovers of, from, from the past, be it in whatever society we're in, you know, whether it's America, whether it's South Africa, you know, anywhere where we've seen prejudices, you know, um, you know, you can, can see there's ongoing wars, you know, Israel, Palestine, India, Pakistan, people don't, don't like each other, Russia, Ukraine. But I think obviously we, we have to, to foster still a greater sense of inclusivity than we have in the world today, even though probably in 2023 we're at the most inclusive stage that humanity's ever been in before. Thank you. So now we are moving it to the global uh, market, right? So uh, cultivating a global mindset. Uh, now we've already touched on uh, what's happening in the world uh, with the first question. Uh, so explain to us the concept of a global mindset. Uh, it's relevant in today's interconnected world uh, and provide insights on how individuals can develop a global perspective. Thank you. Well, I think that firstly, fostering a global perspective or a global mindset, one is to throw yourself out there into, into you know, um, spaces where, where people from differing backgrounds will, will be. And honestly, this firstly, I might not be talking to, say, a person here that might be able to afford to leave the country or a person that has ever left the country 
or might not leave the country in the next 10 years. But an example, say how I've done things like this, um, I'd say domestically, getting in touch with people that are from say other countries here, uh, is I'm part of two voluntary organizations, well actually quite a lot of voluntary organizations, but the two I'm gonna speak about are Toastmasters and then Junior Chamber International. So Toastmasters, the end of it is international, but we're part of a structure which has 13 countries in Southern Africa. And, get, and you know, running for positions on the executive of that, you know, one meets people, especially across, across Africa, but getting up to these higher structures, you'll even find people from other continents come and visit us. Um, but also people from our side of being Southern Africa, they'll go and stand for positions globally, say in America and Europe and so on. Uh, but something which I think truly helps to foster a global outlook that I'm involved in. And again, these are just examples. And why I'm giving these examples is you might find opportunities, whether it's on Facebook or a poster, and maybe don't hesitate to join these things or go to a meeting. So this organization, Junior Chamber International, it's JCI for for short, you don't have to join them, but you can. It's, um, I mean, as in, I'm not forcing anyone to join anything, but obviously I would love you to join these organizations actually. But anyway, uh, it's, an, it's, an, it's an international young professionals organization of people aged 18 to 40. And former presidents and prime ministers all over the world were part of this. And um, even the makeup of us uh, is people from really across Africa, even though we call ourselves JCI South Africa. Uh, and every year there are, there's an Africa and Middle East conference. There's something called the World Congress. So last, no, actually this year, it's still 2023. It's been a long year. Eh? So this year I was in Zimbabwe for them and I was in Japan for them. And with this Japan Leadership Academy they sent me on, um, I interacted with people from over 80 different countries. And so now it's quite easy. Like you can say, do you, do you know a person in Russia? You know, I need to find accommodation in Morocco. I need this person in the US, a person in Germany. It's it's already for me exposed to that one, two week experience that I can say I have a network there. Um, I know also the issue of foreigners, it's honestly touchy in South Africa. You know, there's, there's a whole thing to unpack there, um, you know, but, uh, let's just say, you know, where, you know, people are hardworking, where people are lawful in any country, you know, I mean, I'd have to be, you know, uh, legally present in Germany or Zimbabwe to be there. And I think that's what we expect here. Um, yeah, but we do live in a truly global mindset. I mean, well, or in, a, in a truly global, global world, you know, where I can literally say, you know, I would say in a Toastmasters meeting at two or four in the morning, where, we've, where I've used people in Switzerland and Turkey to join meetings in South Africa so we could do things where I've joined meetings in Ireland. So we can, can honestly see there, I think in our day and age, just harnessing te technology like right now, it, it enables us to, to meet people across really a very diverse, you know, um, you know, you know, range of opportunities, people of different races, experiences, cultures, religions, values, uh, all the rest. Um, yeah, and, and, and I think, yeah, by, by so there's, there's, there's only so much you can do by reading up or watching videos, you know, so you can get some books, go onto YouTube, you can even download PDFs for free, learn about other, other cultures. But I think all of these things, throwing yourself into situations where you experience other, other cultures, I mean, why not? You know, mm -hmm. even if it's used mm -hmm. as a Japanese market or a Jewish market, which maybe that's, what's the word, like, uh, difficult now to say because, you know, there's this Israel-Palestine conflict, but just to <laughs> use some kind of example, you know, you know, things that mm -hmm. you might find that you haven't done it before in an Indian yeah. situation, you know, you, I think, yeah, one, one is able to throw oneself into situations to learn about other cultures and you uh, might be, might be surprised at what you appreciate from them. Awesome. Thank you so much for that. Uh, so it's all about also throwing yourself out there. Uh, LinkedIn is, a, is the nice place to be able to network with uh, global people. Uh, I've met a lot of people or clients that I work with now that are 
in the global market and um, you just have to network and that one person might turn out to know 10 companies which are uh, internationally. So thank you for that uh, uh, perspective, Michael. So now we are going to move to the learning from different industries, right? So let's discuss uh, the advantages of gaining insights from industries outside one's expertise and maybe share some stories of professionals who successfully applied knowledge from diverse fields. Thank you. Well, I know I was I was on uh, well, I, I was once invited to one of these talks before. And honestly, when you do research, we can get onto people like Elon Musk and Steve Jobs and how they incorporated knowledge from different fields. You know, how I say Elon Musk used his knowledge of IT um, and knowledge of vehicles and merged them, and that's how you have Tesla and his knowledge of physics and science, and that's how you get rockets, but he put it in business and he's so wealthy. But my absolute favorite one still has to be, uh, which uh, Google has heard before, has to be Arnold Schwarzenegger. Because this guy's phenomenal. I mean, he 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 was just a, he was just a guy. He was just 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 a guy in Austria. And he went to America and he decided I I will be the world's greatest bodybuilder. And he 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 developed exercises to train specific muscles in the body, which he figured out himself, which people still use to this day, which he designed in like the 1970s. And he 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 won the world bodybuilding competition. It's called Mr. Olympia six times in a row. And then he became an actor. And he didn't only just become like a normal actor, he was paid quite a bit. But what he did is he paved the way so that now it's normal. So when when he wanted to become an actor, executives in Hollywood said, your body's too big and your voice isn't right. There's no way. And as his first major role, it was Conan the Barbarian. And the, the director of this movie said that the size of your body, if we didn't find you, we would have to have made, uh, you know, something, um, you know, like to be a person of this of this size. So now in our day and age, we see people like Dave Batista, we see The Rock, we see John Cena. It's become normal for these people to go into these industries. And then he not only did that, but he, he became governor of the state of California as well. Um, so this is a person across industries that he was he was honestly fearless. Uh, he he had this incredible mindset of 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 really taking on different perspectives at different points of his life and putting these things into into uh, action in uh, the best best possible way. But uh, truly, in 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 other ways, it, it it is important to be able to to synthesize skills. I think if we, if we're looking at money making. We all need some kind of concept of, of an entrepreneurial spirit, some kind of concept of how to run a business, maybe basic accountancy. But you would need to merge that with knowledge of something, you know, whether it's building a space rocket or building a car, or maybe you had, I mean, even if you take it to a, a small level, you know, maybe you had knowledge of sales in a small company, maybe you were selling printers, maybe you were selling debt collection services. But that knowledge, you can, you can, you know, be applying for jobs, say to be selling cars, and you you can take that onwards and upwards. You can you can eventually save some money, create your own company, use that knowledge of sales that you had in practice, maybe to do public relations for your for your for your for your own company. But I, but I think people across the board there they honestly synthesize knowledge of what they've had in what they've had in the past. So. What, what many people might not know, for example, is David Beckham in terms of why this guy is actually, well, we know, well, there's so many examples why he's so rich. He's filthy, he's thinking rich, honestly speaking. But um, so when he was a footballer, he had these like branding deals with people. You know, he, there was like cream and underwear and whatever, glasses, boots, whatever. Um, but once he retired, he formed a branding company. So he was just a footballer. I mean, I don't, I, I mean, I don't think this guy's ever, you know, like gone to university. It's not going to happen, you know, but he had knowledge of, I mean, he had met with people because of his career. He formed a branding company. He, he sold it for something like $250 million. 
you know, which in our terms, that's already more than like 2 billion rand, you know, and, 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 and now he, he actually, uh, he owns a soccer team in America and a soccer team in England at, at the same time and so on. You can, you, you can imagine being a soccer player, you know, he wouldn't have experience running a soccer club, but he played for many teams. So he got to see what people were, were busy with and maybe he thought, you know, I'm, I'm able to improve this in some way. Um, yeah, so I, th I think we can, we, can, we, we can speak for the next 15 days on this, but you can, you can see how people are able to synthesize concepts. You can find mm -hmm. that a lecturer can maybe end up starting a college by looking at their, their knowledge of, of lecturing, maybe where the college they were in, when it, where it went, went, went wrong, mm -hmm. uh, but also using maybe their own insights of business and maybe, you know, friends in their mm -hmm. network that maybe know how to, how to assist with things maybe they can't do themselves. Thank you. Thank you so much for those examples. They're quite really um, amazing having... Um, so for me, what I'm getting is that um, having to, to, to expose yourself to different skills and talents, as much as you might have your own skills uh, self, but you can be able to learn others so that you can be able to move along a variety of diverse careers. You don't have to stick with one, right? So um, thank you so much for those examples. We'll move on to the, to the next benefit before we open up for questions. I'm sure participants might like to ask uh, questions as well. Uh, also to stand a chance to win that uh, ticket to the online career action plan event. Uh, so uh, we will move to adventures in lifelong learning, right? So could you discuss the role of continuous learning in expanding perspectives and share tips on embracing new learning experience? So this is us expanding on the previous segment. Thank you. So I think there's a, there's a variety of ways, okay? So honestly, if you have lots of money, you know, it's easy to always be studying, right? Or if you're in a situation. So I'll, I'll tell you just now, I, I, I was in a situation, I was a member of the Gauteng Legislature, so I I abused that system very much. And I, I got a lot of certificates. Okay. But, <laughs> um, but you know, you, you can even go onto, you know, YouTube. You can you can download books, but continuous learning is very important. Um, so I, I have a lot of especially legal uh, certificates. I have a master's degree in constitutional law. I've done a course in strategic leadership. You can go on for like forever. It's a lot. There's a postgraduate thing in corporate law. There's African political economy. So a bunch of these things I was able to do because when I was a member of the Gauteng Provincial Legislature, um, and if you're a member of parliament, they pay for your studies. So that's a very unique and amazing thing that obviously doesn't happen for most people in society uh, but you might find an employer that's willing to pay for a course or a degree and uh, certainly i've always looked at it that any opportunity that's available for study i should absolutely take it because no one can take it away from you you know people can take a job away uh, they can falsely accuse you of something uh, your wife can leave you um, you know, you can be bankrupt for a time. You can live in your car for two weeks. You can not have a car. You can sleep on the street. You can sleep in shelters for four months. But at the end of the day, no one can take away those qualifications that you have. And the odds of you being able to bounce back from great difficulties in life due to your qualifications are, are often higher, uh, otherwise through connections, otherwise through being known publicly for what you do. A person like... A David Beckham, a Sia Kulisi. You know, those guys don't necessarily have to study stuff, but they have definitely gone on their own process of lifelong learning. So I say David, David Beckham's father was very hard on him, literally, about how to kick a how to kick a soccer ball from you know from before the time we even began began school. Um, you know, if, if you look at the likes of Sia Kulisi, from a young age, he was learning to develop the skills that he has right now. Um, so we, maybe none of us here are sports people, probably, um, but whatever it, so we'll, we can firstly find things that we're interested in. We, it might not feel like lifelong learning, like you might be interested in following Orlando, Orlando Pirates. Um, for example, and actually, if you always go into the stadium, you're watching the games, you'll learn so much about soccer, 
you might end up being able to actually do something in that field, even though you never thought about it in your life. Um, but but certainly the world now is such an open place, you know, coming to meetings such as this one, going to to uh, YouTube, there's even chat G, um, GPT that's act that actually has a free version where you can ask questions to find out almost any answer, answer in this world. Uh, if you literally go to, to YouTube, you can find famous actors, business people, giving you skills for life. I mean, as I sit here, even next to you, I've got three, three books next to me that would all teach me leadership in one way. One is actually an Arnold Schwarzenegger book. And one is a book about leadership and one is a book about how CEOs uh, undertake various things. So it doesn't necessarily need a degree. Um, but I'm not sure if I, if I mentioned this before, um, but there is something called neuro-linguistic programming. And it, in short, it's NLP. And it basically means the language of the brain. And... There are, there are many ideas with this. Like, for example, if you just read a book in it, you'd be able to know how when a person's eyes move, are they remembering a sound or they're remembering something that they, they saw? Like, literally, it's like that in depth and it's true. It's hectic. But the one thing that I take from it is this concept, which is called modeling, which says that you can model the characteristics, the traits, the activities of, of people that you admire that have been successful in the same area where you want to be successful, but you can discard their bad traits. You know, so let's say the example of Tiger Woods. We know, you know, what he did with so many women, but we know that he was remarkable as a golf player. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. You can, you can look at how this guy ate, how he exercised, how he swung a golf club, what he did on a daily basis and copy it. You know, even in the, the world of Cristiano Ronaldo, I mean, he is my favorite player of all time, but we, even then, we have seen he, he literally hit a phone out of a young child's hand in a soccer stadium after a, a poor result. Um, and so, you know, nobody's, nobody's perfect, but it doesn't mean because we want to follow in our hero's footsteps we have to accept everything. So say if you want to be a doctor, a lawyer, a famous speaker, you want to speak well, uh, you want to look at someone, uh, maybe you want to establish many companies, uh, maybe you even just want to establish a laundromat or, or a coffee shop, you want to sell bicycles or, you know, anything. If you copy what these people have done, you can even copy 50 of the best. Um, this is also a way, honestly, to... To, uh, to be able to learn, you know, and you can, you, can, you can find these attributes, whether it's on YouTube um, and in books. I don't know if you can still hear me. It says this video is paused due to problems. With we your... can still hear you. I can okay, still hear you. Right. Yes. <laughs> An error message about network. Thank you so much, Michael. Um, so for me, it's all about practice makes improvement, right? So uh, being able to continuously uh, learn, put yourself through an online course. You mentioned YouTube uh, for just a two, three minutes video, you're learning something, right? And that way you are uh, not uh, stagnant and feel like you don't have anything to offer out there. So thank you so much. Uh, now I'm going to open the floor to the participants. Uh, anyone who'd like to ask a question? <laughs> please uh, let us know you can unmute yourself or you can type it in the chat box we have some time and if none oh we have a uh, Madi Major you may go ahead Madi Major you can unmute yourself yeah thank you thank you thank you very much uh, program director uh, I think your name is, is Gugu, ne? Yes, I am Gugu. Okay, let me just uh, switch on my camera so that you can also see me. Uh, Michael, thank you very much for the presentation. I, I've known Michael for a long time, right? Uh, and it is very good to see that I am now uh, aspired to learn from the best or of his mind uh, given the experience that he has gone through over 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 the life as a as a young man uh, uh, like him uh, uh, it is very impressive 
Uh, but Mike, let me let me say let me not go too much as to background as to how we know each other. Uh, uh, uh. On the uh, you spoke about the the the, the issue of diversity in uh, different spaces or environment. And we, we, we can all agree that it is uh, still a problem for whereby some of the, uh, the leaders, especially leaders of the same gender as mine and you, uh, sometimes uh, 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 they don't want to give up to, 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 to other genders, uh, other people of different background. So what do you think we can do as leaders or as aspiring leaders uh, to ensure that we bring all uh, uh, everyone on board? Uh, uh, what, 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 needs to, what do you think needs to be done to unlock our, our thinking uh, uh, as leaders of the society or as leaders of our businesses to ensure that we consider all the angles of these things? Because it is a, it has been a, a, a long-standing problem in our midst, and we have to unlock this in order to get uh, what is uh, the perspective of other genders, other people of different backgrounds, and of which is still lacking in our midst. And, uh, and I'm sure you can also attest to that uh, from the background where we come from. But I think if maybe we can get a, 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 at least a highlight as to what one can try to do uh, immediately after I got into that particular leadership position. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Gugu. Okay, thank you. So I have to admit my my internet died and then I switched to another situation. So maybe I didn't hear for like 20 seconds. Um, but I think Alrighty. I got the sort of gist of it, which was about like, how do you basically develop diversity and inclusion as a leader once you're in a space, once you get into that position? Yes. Exactly, exactly. Okay, awesome. And, and I thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Ali. So I know that, you know, Ali, Ali wants to be, you know, like a, a humble person. Mm. Yeah, but he, there's a, a lot that he can, he, can, he can say about what he's done. Uh, and anyway, but amongst many things, he's been a chairperson of community safety for the whole city of, city of Tony. So, yeah. But he wouldn't tell you that. He just wants to be humble and quiet. He's like, I'm just a like, regular guy. Um, yeah, so I suppose as 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 a leader, there are two ways to go about it. Actually, interestingly, Musi Maimani, he was the one that taught me. He said that leaders always have to provide a vision of the future. So the best way to go about it, and I'm literally thinking whether we're in politics, whether we're on the board of a company, let's say, uh, whether you're you don't even have a board, but maybe you have management, you need to convince people of a vision. The best is for everyone to buy in to what you believe in, where you honestly, you know, explain to them why this is the best course, it's best for the organization, you know, this is the best uh, plan of action going forward. And uh, you might find difficult people, um, you know, maybe a person might even leave the company depending on the situation at hand or the organization. Um, but if you can get broad buy-in, I think that's the best way. Uh, so I've, so me being what having been in the private sector, the public sector, and the NGO space, a, a lot of my experience with politics and NGOs is more along that line of thinking, because often you you have voluntary people that you don't pay. You can't just say to a person, you know, you are fired. If you don't go my way, it's my way or the highway type of situation. And, you know, I, I think more about building consensus and building building um, support sort of as, as one team. But you can also be forceful about it. Um, I would say also what Musi did when he was in the DA, but you see he's no longer there, but I'm sure Ali, Ali's still in the DA, I'm sure probably. So I doesn't say many things about the beer, it's bad. But um, what, uh, what 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 uh, Musi did, um, he, he, he basically put it into like the founding documents of the organization. So they had these three values, uh, freedom, fairness, opportunity. And then he went to what's called a Congress, but it could be like an AGM or a company. So there you might have a memorandum of association or 
memorandum of, uh, yeah, well, it depends whether it's a partnership or a, a, a private company, a public company. But essentially, in he he added this value of diversity to the organization to say, you, you know, this is why. So that in, in essence, it became a founding principle. So theoretically, people can't uh, deviate from from that. But I suppose the the last way, which which isn't nice, um, but it may have to be done, is you know it's you know relatively forceful, you know, to say you know that this is what our organization is about, and if you don't like it, you can you can you can honestly leave, and you know this is this is the way we are we are we are building, uh, going going forward. Um, but I think I think all these things are about building building a culture, building a sense of inclusion. Like let's say, let's say there is a company, right, and uh, it's always been completely black. And then Ali is on this board. He wants to get me in on the board, right? Now I'm like I'm very aware. I mean, we are in this. We are in the country where apartheid happened. Like that's that that, that is a fact. You know, we're in the most unequal society on earth. You know, people might say, you know, what is this white guy doing here? Uh, people have had very bad experiences with people of different racial groups in our country. It doesn't mean everyone's had that experience, but people have had these experiences. And so it might take a while, whether it's workshops, whether it's getting to know one, but also they say your perception is limited by what you are exposed to. So being exposed maybe to a person of a differing race that, you know, isn't you know, acting in a certain way to you that, you know, is racist or is abusive or is excluding others. You know, I think this can build up trust over over time. But, but I think all of these things are about fostering a culture that everyone believes in. And um, in, in general, this takes time to achieve. It doesn't even take a year in an organization to, to completely build a, a culture. But Ultimately, we have to find ways to, you know, build a build a specific culture where people broadly buy into uh, why we need to be diverse, why we need to include others, and genuinely believe and understand that diversity is actually the best thing to do. Thank you so much, uh, Michael, for that answer. Um, Marimaj, I hope uh, that answered your question. Um, do we have any more questions from the participants? Any more questions? Alrighty. So I uh, will move on to the last, last part, which is cultivating curiosity and openness. So now uh, let's discuss the significance of curiosity and openness in uncovering fresh opportunities. Maybe share some approaches of nurturing curiosity and welcoming novel experiences. Okay, thank you. Well, I think that honestly being curious, it's the, it's the founding sort of concept that gets us to do anything it, it makes us explorers it's why why humanity put a man on the moon uh it's why we even know the layout of this world like that we even know where a place like antarctica is that there's a map that tells us like the whole thing like the, like the shape the size you know so somebody was curious enough to go there where it's that cold there's nothing happening um you know so everything really that humanity has done um there was a, a quote in a movie once when i was a child that said humanity is the only species to rise above its origins and to me that was all you know founded in curiosity you know it, it's how it's how america was let's say found even though there were people there in the first place so that's that that's also a touchy thing like south africa wasn't found like there were there were people there <laughs> but, but you get um you get to the point you know people were pe people have been curious to to develop more and more things you know it's you know it's why we have why we have running water it's why we have cars um you know so on and so on and so forth um yeah well there's uh, an uh, explorer which was sir ernest henry shackleton and um 
he was curious actually to find more of Ant Antarctica. Uh, and it basically failed in that the ship got, you know, um, destroyed. And people expected that uh, every, well, the people on his crew were going to die because of the conditions in Ant Antarctica. And he, he, he managed through, you know, teamwork and perseverance and dedication to, um, to keep everyone alive. And, and his stories become a story of, of leadership, even though he didn't achieve what he wanted to achieve. So may, maybe they found out more things which uh, people were able to, to learn. But yeah, but, but I think we can go on and on about why curiosity has been important in discovering inventions. And that's how we discover new and new things all the time, uh, new ways of doing things, much more efficient and faster ways of, of doing things, um, and so on and so forth. I see that Bright is a, a question, but I suppose I would just continue with the, about examples and, you know, why curiosity is important. Um, yes, now, we, uh, we will take, uh, uh, sorry, Mark, uh, we will take Brighton's question. As soon as you finish with that examples, then we will take his question. And then, okay, yeah. thanks. I think you're asking about ways one can foster curiosity. So I think yes. almost it, it relates to what I said at the beginning about you know throwing yourself into things, and it might be it might be hard. Um, you might not be of the personality, let's say, where you like talking to new people, or you maybe go out a lot. But also, firstly, where you where you where you find something. Um, and maybe you, you could learn more about another another culture or such. But even if your mind isn't like that, let's say you're interested in inventing stuff or science or whatever, you can go down that road more and more, and you can find ways that appeal to you to learn things, which 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 could be YouTube, it could be a book, it could be experimenting with different things. You know, how does this fit together? Maybe you're interested in in computers you know you can maybe open something up and take something out and put it back and see how does this work what is it, what is it, what what does it affect but i think there are so many things online that you know help us in this in, in this day and age but i think ultimately exposure to different experiences um i think that's in the end of the day that's what makes curiosity almost almost normal um and to you know maybe maybe copy and sense people that have been curious to develop new things you know we know steve jobs bill gates elon elon musk these are uh, soccer players playing in so many different uh, countries um, you know people are developing new kinds of methods to get things things done in their in their in their countries to truly develop things uh, even the way that people like nelson mandela and desmond desmond tutu how they were able to i'd say bring our country together and take us out of, you know, what would have been a very highly likely, you know, violent uh, conflict. Even that was, 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 was actually innovating because the, the whole world never expected any uh, society to, to do that. So I think, yeah, we can, we, we can basically take, take examples from uh, people as well, but we can also develop curiosity in ways that are, I'd say are maybe safer and, more um, appealing to to each of us depending on what our personality type is but i think the most important thing is to never stop being curious ever and i think here in south africa and i know maybe i'm belaboring the point a bit but here in south africa i think we maybe we are naturally either maybe we are naturally curious people i don't know but we have so many cultures and races and religions yet we all get on. So maybe there's a sense of curiosity from South African people, um, you know, to, to know and understand each other and how, how people work and how, how uh, things work. And I think we, we all have a resolve as South Africans, especially we always find a way to keep moving, um, to keep moving forward. Thank you, thank you so much. I'm going to let Bright uh, ask you a question, then uh, we can close. Bright, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here, and um, thank awesome. you very much. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity, and I think I must apologize for joining late. I was also having my last lectures today on campus, 
So maybe if I might introduce myself, I'm Bright, um, who's up here. I'm currently doing my master's in public health with University of Pretoria. And um, if I can pose this question to Mr. Michael, um, how do you attract or how do you get the attention of certain companies? For example, um, sometimes I go, I, I, I go to LinkedIn, then I see some companies that I think, you know, um, they are doing something which is in line with something I want to do in future. And sometimes you email them, you don't get a response because you want to practically do some internship to gain an experience from such big companies that you ever dream of, you know, um, working there. And I think normally you start from this internship and this kind of, you know, um, stuff that gets get you closer to such companies. But sometimes um, you email them, you go to LinkedIn, you, you DM most of the managers, they don't, they don't get back to you. And I, I do understand you saying that South Africa is the most, you know, um, diverse country with a lot of history. So I don't know, sometimes it becomes difficult, maybe because of your color or your skin or something, you don't get attention of these people. So I think he's experienced enough. You can tell me what are some of the approaches as an incoming researcher um, to, to do to attract the attention of people that you think they will, they will serve as a mentor, they will serve as, you know, a, a leading role model to get to you, your career, you know, um, ambition as a young entrepreneur or as a young researcher. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. So I, I think first I must say that even looking at my CV, which I know is quite good for my own gen, well, age and generation, it's hard for all of us. First, I'm <laughs> honestly like it's hard for all of us, but uh, but I'll tell you, tech, I think tech, techniques that are that are likelier to to work, right? So ultimately, people want to see that you add value. Okay. So I've been in two political parties where they've 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 like they've like created a job for me, like from meeting with these people. Like I mean, I, I shouldn't admit this, but. So pe people have looked at my previous sort of qualifications and experience and they're like, you know, we actually need you, uh, you know, and we, we want you to do this and this and this. Um, but so, so if I can take, for example, let's say uh, being in Toastmasters, it doesn't mean you have to join Toastmasters, but it's an example. They have a lot of corporate clubs. So they have two clubs with discovery, they have clubs with Vodacom. They have clubs with the Internal Orders Institute of South Africa. And so I've been exposed, let's say, to the people that run Discovery for the, for the country just by, going to, just by going to these meetings. And by, I would say, the way that I walk and talk, you know, even giving them advice on how they must be giving speeches and things, they, they do foster a certain, you know, opinion of you. And you can exchange business cards. There is actually a lady in Toastmasters that through this, and it wasn't the plan, I'm, I'm sure, but through this, she literally got a job in Vodacom because of how these people valued her and saw her. So I, th I think largely it's to do, with, to do with networking. But I think one needs to display an interest in things. So, so you mentioned lecturing. So let's say you want to... I mean, just, just I, I would just use an example. Let's say Stadio, which is a college in Waterfall in Midrand, they recently had a talk where they invited, and I'm just, this is so embarrassing because I've done a lot, a lot of stuff in politics. Honestly, I can see his face. This is terrible. But there was a, a very prominent uh, ANC treasurer general in the past. It's also a lawyer. People like him a lot. I don't know if Ali can, can remember who this guy is, but people even want this guy to be president. I think he has a law firm in Nalsprate. But the point is, he um, he was a speaker, and it's open to the public, so it gives you an opportunity. You could go there and attend the lecture, and then talk with other lecturers and people, and give them your uh, business card, and maybe you can email them after they've met you in person. And during the lecture, you can ask you know very insightful questions that show you know that you're eager and 
all of these kind of kind of things, almost to get involved in the life of things. So, um, you know, I would say, you know, Ali knows me from us being in, in uh, the DA in the past, how I became a counselor, right? So I failed seven times to become a city counselor. And I got an eighth try. And how I did this is I was just so, so super, 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 super involved. Like I was the head of training in the region, but I was um, the deputy for disciplinaries in the province. And it just like, there's so much stuff that I was doing that was actually unpaid. Either you would have to get me to do stuff to get anything done, or you'd have to talk about me in, in a meeting. So it doesn't have to get to that level. I mean, maybe I over I overdid it, you know, you know, like big, big way. But I think if people know you and they perceive you to be adding value, I think to me that's a major in. You know, even if you email someone and you say, look, you know, you 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 know need to correct this on this particular graphic, or the email I received from you is a little bit wrong in this way. And maybe, you know, tell them about, you know, the passion of the organization or that you have for the organization, maybe ask to to meet with them. Um, you know, so I would say it's to, it's to kind of create opp opportunities, I'd say, to be able to to meet with these people will make it more, more likely uh, that they'll take you on board. But obviously, if we had all the answers, I wouldn't be talking to you. I'd be a billionaire. I'd be like in Italy or something. I'd be on like a, a jet ski from my from my yacht and there's dolphins next to me and stuff but I, I do think that we can yeah we can we can yeah that with these uh, ideas um you know we can we, we can try to create the spaces for uh, ourselves but obviously people do need each other always and any kind of anything whether it's a government it's a it's a political party it's it's uh, the university of pretoria it's a college all these things are just names on a piece of paper uh, everything's animated by other human beings and then ultimately we need to find ways to make you know these people feel impressed uh, with us and to feel that we'll add immense value to them thank you so much um i hope that answers your question right and yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. you are able to at least find some way to move a step ahead yeah, thank you very much because um, he just brought my attention to the issue of always letting them know what to bring to the table, what value you can mm. add to them. It's mm. not basically writing to them to say, I want to gain experience from your company or I want to be mentored by you. It's about you putting yourself to let them know how much value you can add to them. So I think it makes sense a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Awesome, thank you. So uh, I'd like to express uh, our gratitude to Michael, our fantastic speaker, for sharing uh, his wealth of knowledge and inspiring us uh, today. So Michael, your wisdom is very uh, invaluable always. So thank you so much for being here. So I am concluding the session, uh, but remember to broaden your perspective. Uh, always know that it's not just a, about a one-time event today. Today is just to learn. We've learned insights from Michael, but uh, there's internet, there's YouTube, there's AI today that we are able to research and find more knowledge into what we can do to uh, as a life, learn, uh, life learning journey, uh, uh, embracing our diversity, cultivating curiosity and stepping out of our comfort zones because really uh, opportunities will not find us just sitting and not doing anything right uh, so that we are able to reach that goal that we aspire to reach uh, so today thank you for joining us today everyone thank you thank you thank you so much and um uh, stay tuned for our linkedin uh competition where we will be giving away those tickets i did mention someone will be winning today uh michael do you want to perhaps give one ticket uh before we leave that's okay let's <laughs> oh, no, it's a uh, it sounds uh yeah rough hey uh, but but i mean oh. is it it's obviously it's obviously between Alia and Bright. Yes. Am I can I come in? I would like to dedicate it to to Bright. Yeah? Wow. I would like to dedicate it to Bright. 
then uh, next time, and then next time we'll have a, a serious competition myself with uh, Bright and the rest of the team. But in the meantime, it will it will be like bias, uh, like as, as, as for myself and you as as like friends. Uh, but I I, I, really, I really I really I really appreciate uh, your consideration in this in this matter. Uh, thank awesome. you very much. Awesome, Congratulations. Thank you, Marimeta. Thank, thank you so thank much. You. Uh, we will be in touch, right, uh, so that we can be able to help you uh, navigate and how to craft that story that Michael has given you a tip to say, what is it that I'm going to add value to uh, your company instead of you uh, trying to uh, gain experience. So we'll be in touch. So thank you so much, Michael, for awarding uh, Bright with that <laughs> and Ali also <laughs> for giving it away. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you very Thank you so much. much. Yes, uh, uh, Mike, please, please call me. Man. I don't have your numbers anymore. Sorry, Coco, for touching me. Not a problem. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, we will Thank send you uh, emails uh, to uh, uh, to ask for feedback, how the session was um, to everyone. And uh, competition is still on. So it is 15 participants that we'd like to cater for, but three tickets are off the grab. Oh, so now it's two. Bright has won one. So I will be Thank giving you. away two more tickets via our LinkedIn profile. Just follow us and then we will put it out there. Thank you so much for everyone who has came. Michael, you've been great one more time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Keep on. Thank you, Gugu. Thank you so much.